Hey guys and welcome back. This is going to be my very last video covering chemistry topics. So about, I think, 36 videos later, eight hours of chemistry videos and probably about 10 hours of preparation. I finally come to the end. So as much as I say I have enjoyed doing this, I will not say I would be lying if I said I'm not glad it's over. Um, so again, this is very typical type of question so just a series of reactions and going what's the product what's the product what's the product and you, all you need to do is just draw them okay so this may be accompanied with subsequent questions that are like oh what's the mechanism for this reduction what would happen so if you look at this one what would happen here if you use acid instead of base another common one is what are the um, IOR signals for all of the starting materials? So you'll want to know the difference between an acid and aldehyde and acid chloride, amide and ketone. So these are really, really common questions and I'm sure you'll see them all over your past exam papers. So I'm just going to go through what each of the products are. So in this case, you are having an esterification that is catalyzed by an acid. OK, so what will happen overall is that OH will attack in here. Your carbonyl will go up. You'll form a tetrahedral intermediate. It'll Those electrons will come back down and then you'll kick out your water and sorry, you'll kick out your OH, which will have been protonated by H plus. OK, so obviously I'm showing this in kind of a concerted manner. This happens in a stepwise manner. So do look at the video on carboxylic acids where I show in detail what happens. OK, but I'm just roughly kind of summarizing what happens. But overall, the product of your reaction is your ester plus H2O. OK, one thing I will say that is really, really important is just make sure whatever the ore group on your alcohol is, make sure you draw it right when you draw the ester. That is the most common mistake that happens in esterification reaction questions. OK, so just speaking from experience, having corrected the past papers, having corrected papers in the past for this module, this happens a lot. OK, so make sure you go, oh, one, two, three carbons, one, two, three carbons. It sounds like it's really simple when it's right in front of you, but you'll be surprised how many people make the mistake. OK, so in this one, you have an aldehyde and you have this chromium oxidant and some acid as well. So this is a really well known oxidation reaction and it will give you. Instead of benzaldehyde, you will end up with benzoic acid. So the mechanism for this is a little bit longer, but it is in the video on oxidation and reduction. So if you want to refresh your memory on how exactly this works, check that out. And just remember, it doesn't happen to ketones. So if this was not a hydrogen, then you wouldn't form the acid. Nothing would happen at all. OK. So this is the reaction between an acid chloride and an amide. Sorry, an amine to form an amide. OK. So what happens here is the lone pair on your nitrogen will come in and attack the carbonyl and the same as before, your carbonyl will open up to form a tetrahedral intermediate, then those electrons will come back down and you'll kick out your chlorine because Cl- minus is quite stable so chlorine is a good leaving group. So the product of that reaction then is this plus HCl. OK, so you, you lose one hydrogen from your amine because it has to be NH, not NH2. And then you lose a chlorine from over here. So overall, you have a HCl. So one question that might be asked, and it's usually kind of um, a fine detail question to try and differentiate between are you getting a B or an A plus? Why do you use an excess of this amine? OK, so pause the video maybe and have a think about that for a second. Why would you use more than one equivalent of your amine? So hopefully you're managed to able to come up with an answer for that. So the reason is the byproduct of the reaction is HCl. That's hydrochloric acid. Amines are basic. OK, so what will happen is, is every time you form one amide bond, you're actually going to inactivate one molecule of amine with this HCl, because what will happen is you'll end up with NH3 plus and that's not nucleophilic anymore. So that's why you use an excess of amine. So the next one is the opposite type of reaction. OK, so this is a base uh, base catalyzed hydrolysis, sorry, base mediated hydrolysis of an amide. So what's happening is what you've got here is Na plus and O minus. OK, OH minus. So the negatively charged oxygen will come in and attack your carbonyl. Then you'll form your tetrahedral intermediate. 
that will collapse back down and kick out your amine okay and after you do that what you will end up with is the oxygen and then you have your amine so that will be NH2 but what's really important to remember is that because this is sodium hydroxide your reagent is a base and you, you're actually forming a carboxylic acid but because this is acidic you have a base you're forming O minus Na plus this is really important if you want full marks for this question you need to recognize that if you used a base you end up with a carboxylate and then there's a question down here about what would happen if you use an acid okay so actually I'll skip down to that now so if we did use an acid instead of sodium hydroxide so let's say we used HCl okay the products of the reaction would be I'll push that up so you'd have your carboxylic acid because the fact that it's in acidic conditions your carboxylic acid will have its proton but your amine is basic so you'll end up with the ammonium so if you were to say use HCl you would protonate your amine and you'd form the chloride salt okay so fortunately this is actually really helpful because what it will mean is that if someone asks you specifically what would happen if you use an acid instead it makes you think about oh well hold on this should have been a carboxylate not a carboxylic acid but sometimes this question isn't in the exam so it's not immediately obvious that you need to remember about this so do pay attention to that and then in the last one you have the sodium borohydride reduction of a ketone so what happens overall is as I said before you're Borohydride is basically a source of H minus. So sorry if I'm drawing that not great. So your boron is negatively charged. And what will happen is, is one of these hydrogens will take a pair of electrons away from the boron. So the electrons in this bond come over here and attack the carbonyl. And when that happens, your carbonyl will then attack a H3O plus. So that oxygen is positively charged and when your carbonyl or the oxygen gets its negative charge and that goes on then to attack the hydrogen, the electrons in the oxygen hydrogen bond will go back to your oxygen. So then the product of the reaction, and I'm just going to say pH instead of drawing out the benzene ring, so that's phenyl, is OH pH plus water. Okay, and then also you're going to have borane as your byproduct. Okay, so check that out. I know it's covered in details in your lecture notes and I think I cover it in an earlier video. I can't remember which one it is now, but it was definitely one of the test questions. So these are very common types of reactions um, that you should know. You should be able to predict the products. Other ones include things like forming. How do you form an acid chloride? So what reagent will you use to form an acid chloride? Or how do you convert an alcohol to an alkyl chloride or an alkyl bromide? How do you oxidize? What's the mechanism for the oxidation of an aldehyde or um, for the oxidation of an alcohol to an aldehyde slash ketone? So there's loads of mechanisms, but they all follow some really, really simple rules. OK, the arrow has to start at either a lone pair or a negative charge or something that's electron rich and you have to make sure it finishes at exactly at the atom you are trying to show being attacked. So for example, if I had this ketone, okay, and I have my H minus like this and I just go, oh, you won't get marks for that, okay, because we're going to say they're not really sure about this mechanism, are they? OK, so you have to be absolutely clear that you are attacking this position and the same with this. It's not OK to say, well, you're going to break the pi bond and the electrons go up here. That's not where they go. They go back up onto the oxygen. OK, so that's probably the biggest tip I can give you in the exam. If you are labeling something. So, for example, if you're labeling these kind of things, arrows have to be directly to what you're saying. You have to circle specifically what you're talking about. Don't have ambiguous arrows in the exam because you'll get no marks. Don't hedge your bets. So this is the final goodbye in terms of the chemistry videos. I will have one video in about a day or two um, just to thank everybody for donations, etc. Once I get the final donations in. So all I'll say is the best of luck in your exams. If you can understand most of the videos that I've put up and remember them, you'll do absolutely fine in the exam. 
And so I want to say thank you again. If you haven't donated already, please do check out the GoFundMe page. And I really hope that you found these videos useful. Some of you have very kindly emailed me to let me know how useful they were. And I super appreciate that. It really meant a lot. So thank you guys so much and best of luck.